Welcome to the GovComs podcast, bringing you the latest insights and innovations from experts and thought leaders around the globe in government communication. Now, here is your host, David Pembroke. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to GovComs, the podcast that examines the practice of content communication in government and the public sector. My name's David Pembroke, and thank you very much for joining me once again. Today is part two of our interview with Conrad Bird, who is the director of the Great Britain campaign at the Department for International Trade at the United Kingdom. But he's also a member of the Government Communication Service leadership team. Now, if you haven't listened to last week's podcast, or sorry, a fortnight's ago podcast about the Great Campaign, hit pause and jump back and have a listen to that because it is a fantastic episode. You will be so inspired once you listen to that campaign about how great ideas and how teamwork and how imagination and creativity can create massive impact for the citizens of your country. So hit pause now and jump back, but make sure you come back because we are going to speak about the year of marketing. Now, for many of you who listen to this podcast, you will know that I am a big fanboy of the government communication service in the UK because they do it so well. But this time, they've taken it another step up and called for the year of marketing. Now, the reason that why this intrigues me so much is because certainly here in Australia, the word marketing is almost anathema in the government context. And I was only in a workshop the other day where the word marketing kept coming up again and again, and the senior person in the room, there was a visceral reaction to this word marketing. They just didn't like it because it's it's this association, this misunderstanding of marketing as to what it is, but this association that we don't do marketing, that you know, marketing is for McDonald's and marketing is for Coca-Cola, but it's not for government. Now, I'm sure every one of you listening to the podcast knows that that's not the case, But the government communication service in the UK has taken what I believe is a very brave decision to step forward and say, no, we are going to own marketing, we are going to explain marketing, and we're going to push forward. Joining me once again is Conrad Bird, a superstar in the world of government communications. He joins me on the line now. Uh, Conrad, thanks very much for uh, doing part two of this interview. It's a great pleasure, David. Uh, very nice to speak to you, uh, too. And um, uh, I'll echo what you say. So just to put some uh, thought on the line, um, I think the word marketing in, uh, in the British government is, is in many ways felt to be the same as it is in the Australian government. So we are, we are brethren in that, uh, in, that, in that situation. But you are brave because you, have, you haven't stepped away from it. You've actually stepped around. Uh, we, I stepped around it. I was like, I can't win this fight. Um, you know, I, yeah. I was I kept trying to push the notion of content and content marketing in a government context, and it failed to resonate. But as soon as we started talking about communication and content communication, uh, you could see the lights go on and go, oh, okay, communication, we do that. But it's everything that's associated with marketing. And this is a global problem for the word of marketing. It's not just in the UK. It's not just in Australia. It's all through North America. You talk to anyone over there, marketing has a bad rap. So why is it that you have decided to say, no, no, we are going to own this and we're going to make this work? Well, it's, first of all, I'm with you on this. I mean, I, I was just to echo something else. I mean, um, I was saying in my previous podcast, you know, talking to when I was trying to explain the, the benefits of the Great Britain campaign to the Treasury, um, I avoided all words like marketing, communications, public relations, the lot, because uh, from the same reason. So um, the year of marketing is bold and, and it's brave. And, and let's just start with the kind of um, uh, the basics on it. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you've ever tried to Google marketing, the word marketing, and trying to find the definition of marketing. I did it recently as this, as this whole um, program began to kick off, and I found, I think, a website with 72 different <laughs> definitions of marketing. So I'm not entirely sure that the marketing community, and by that I mean beyond government, actually has done a great job marketing itself um, in many ways. So um, I guess that's the start of the 10. Um, so, so why do we set this about? Because, I mean, the, the government has a, a pretty proud history of running campaigns that have actually public 
uh, behavior campaigns that have actually saved lives or created jobs or recruited nurses. Um, you know, uh, we've, we, uh, we, as you have probably, these public information campaigns have been very strong and they've, um, they've really have been a force for good. So, you know, it's, it, that's kind of in a sense, you know, that's our starting point. Um, you know, we believe that whatever you want to call this thing, it is valuable to society. It is a force for good. Uh, and actually it can help you recruit more nurses more doctors, more soldiers. Um, it can actually help um, prevent obesity, smoking. It can, as in the Great Britain campaign, generate jobs and growth for the country. Um, so th- that's our starting, our starting point for 10. This is a good thing. Um, that's fine. Um, and I think that actually, whatever you call it, people kind of recognize as, uh, as that. But, and there's a big but here, um, the world of marketing or whatever we're going to call it has changed, is changing and has changed massively over um, the, the, the past five years and is set to change hugely as we go forward. Um, and you know, a lot of that is, uh, is driven by um, uh, technology and data and advances in that areas, but also there've been some pretty profound societal changes. So um, we, you know, we kicked off this year by, uh, by wanting and first thing to actually acknowledge that um, this thing called marketing has, uh, has value, not just to uh, in the communications profession itself, but to operate uh, operations people, delivery people, permanent secretaries around the world, around around government. So it has value. Whatever you want to call it, it has value. Secondly, we wanted to perhaps put a uh, you know, remind um, the people working in marketing, the hardworking people in uh, in marketing around cross government, that actually um, they deserve. Not a pat on the back because that, well, they do deserve a pat on the back, but they deserve some recognition that the work they're doing is is profound and serious and important, and they do it pretty well. But also, we recognise that um, you know, if this um, this uh, marketing is going to continue and thrive in the future in government, we've really got to move with the times. We've got to have you. Know, there'll be jobs coming in, individuals you know coming in um, whose job titles haven't even been written at the moment. And you know, five years ago we wouldn't talk about data scientists. We now have them in. Uh, in area. So we looked at this and said, uh, we've got a real challenge ahead of us to keep this um, profession called marketing skilled, um, refreshed with new thinking and new, and new blood and of value to governments and actually moving with the times. So really, we kicked it off uh, this year of marketing with the manifesto, and, uh, and in, you know, which is very, very brave if you're trying to look into the future. And I sat down with a some, some wise people and some people in uh, government and said, look, what does the kind of, you know, what is the future? Uh, let's 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 roll on to 2025. You know, and um, yeah, what does the future look like for marketers? And we began to kind of write thoughts and all the rest of it. We showed them some senior marketers around the private sector, and they said, "Well done, you've got to about 2020 with your thinking." Um, so that's how fast it's moving. Um, so we've set ourselves a challenge, and that is the year of marketing. The challenge we've laid down says we need to have a really strong conversation about what the future looks like in marketing and how we are going to actually um, uh, rise to that challenge and move on. And there's some provocative thinking on it. And um, this, perhaps, David, is is where I get super radical. We may not use, as you say, the word marketing in the future. It's just a question mark. Mm. Um, Why? Because the real future, I think, of of really high quality government services and deliveries uh, lies in our ability uh, to really serve the customer, understand the citizen, engage with them, and take them on a highly high quality journey to actually solve their problems or, or, or move them forward in any ways. And that requires more than just um, marketing. It also requires digital. It requires um, operations working together. So we believe marketing must be the catalyst for this because marketing has always traditionally and will in the future understand the customer. Its job is to understand the customer and bring that customer perspective into uh, into government to challenge all of us to actually improve our services uh, uh, to give the customer a, a better service. So yes, marketing, don't know what the word is going to be in the future, but the sentiment and the skills of the modern marketeer, I believe, are needed more than ever. But why, as the government communication service, why didn't you double down on the word communication and use it as the year of communication? 
Because we do see it as a separate discipline. Um, and again, this is where we can get um, uh, into kind of uh, different definitions. But I do see something like uh, stratcoms, strategic communications or press and media or um, internal communications. We see them as uh, uh, actually um, you know, slightly separate functional disciplines. And I think the word communications is really too broad here. Um, I know this from experience of sitting in a room um, with somebody who was also in communications and our backgrounds were totally different. Our backgrounds and skill sets were totally different. I come from advertising marketing campaigns. The other guy came from um, you know, PR, press, media, and yes, we had you know uh, we, we we obviously understood some things together, but you know our, our backgrounds were different. I I would have found it hard to do his job as he would have found it hard to do my job uh, in that way. So I think communications is too broad for us. This is a sub, very very important subcategory of communications that actually can help us really understand the, the customer and um, find ways of actually pro-social behaviour change. Mm. Because I do have the manifesto in front of me and it says, the UK government defines marketing as, quote, the yep. strategic application of a range of techniques that help fulfil operational and policy objectives by effectively understanding and meeting the needs of citizens. Yeah, I think that's and pretty really tidy. Pleased. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that one as well, because for me, that absolutely hones down. It's strategic as well as delivery. It is absolutely linked to policy and operational objectives, and it effectively puts understanding the needs of citizens at the centre of it. So I'm pretty happy with that definition. Um, we called it the UK government, because I didn't want to add um, another definition to those other 74 that appear <laughs> on Google. So this is our... This is our own working <laughs> definition of something called marketing. <laughs> but how then, but this is the challenge though, and, and, and again, we can have this conversation, everyone probably listening to this podcast can have this um, conversation and understand the difference and, and the um, sophistication, I suppose, around the points that are trying to be made. But how then do you change that wider view of marketing of something that we just don't do that um for me um we we act with the intelligence of marketers in other words we don't talk about marketing we talk about the citizen yeah. we talk about the citizen and we talk about the objectives and we and that's where we have common purpose that's where we have common purpose for instance with our you know um uh, our our hospitals, our military, our prisons. We, 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 you know, the, the challenge uh, on a recruitment campaign, which is a relatively simple and understandable form of marketing, is we need, <clears throat> we need to recruit and retain more high-quality individuals to run a public service. That's the language you use. You, you don't go in first by talking about marketing. So the year of marketing, uh, paradoxically, is as much for the marketing profession to get its head around who it is and what it does, but when, certainly when I meet senior stakeholders, I absolutely start with the policy objectives and the audiences. And we must have, we as marketers must have a profound understanding of both and a humility to know that we can't answer the whole, the, the whole question. So in terms of the year of marketing, what yeah. are you going to do in the year of marketing? How are you going to raise the profile um, of marketing, the prof you know the the profession and the skills of marketing inside the UK government, and uh, probably a second question: How mature uh, is the function inside the UK government at the moment? Um, so let me ask the, 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 the answer the first uh, second question first. Pretty mature, in so much as I'm um, sorry about that. That's on my, on my phone. Um, pretty mature in, in so much as since the formation of the COI in in, um, in the earlier 20th century, um, we have done something called marketing. We've got a skill uh, and developed government has understood. Sorry, C is, yeah, COI? What's, what's that stand the, for? Sorry, it, was, it was the Central Office of Information. So in a sense, okay. it was... Um, it was set up after, after I think, the Second World War to um, you know, run public information campaigns such as drink driving and so on. So we've got a pretty right. good history of people coming in and understanding that actually we need to do something called, you know, in the old days it was called advertising, whatever, to try and make uh, 
citizens aware that it's wrong to drink and drive. And then, of course, they got more sophisticated as we began to measure it. We began to understand the values of segmentation, of insight, and we learned. And so we've been running parallel with the private sector marketing community and advertising community for some time. So not a bad maturity, um, but also, a, I, I would say, a profession within government that is under huge challenge, uh, obviously from forces uh, of technology and other areas. And as you say, the need, to, uh, the need to keep on reaffirming and reminding people of its value. Um, the second thing is, is to answer the, the, the first question then, um, we will do it by a number of means. Um, obviously, uh, putting forward a manifesto is a good start. And by the way, when I say this is the year of marketing, I regard this as the first chapter of a long running conversation. So even at the end of the year, we will carry on going with this transformation program. But we need to demonstrate, uh, by example, the value that this particular profession brings to um, uh, senior stakeholders, whether they're permanent secretaries, holding big budgets, actually looking at operational delivery, or whether they're ministers um, wanting us to actually uh, promote policies and so on. And so, you know, the whole year is dedicated at one level to the influencers, to identifying them, to explaining what we've done, why we're doing it, how we're getting better. The second element, obviously, is um, the recruitment element of attracting more people into profession. Um, and the third is, uh, is our own profession, is to talk about the changes and begin to um, see, you know, what are we doing at the moment? Because it is a vast community. And uh, one thing I wanted to do um, early on was say we put out forward our principles and our challenges of technology of fake news of trust and we've begun to kind of say who in the marketing profession in the uk or in, in in the government is actually using new technology in a clever way who is using data science and advanced segmentation in a clever way who is actually you know trying to wrestle with ai in a clever way who is actually tackling the issue of trust or uh, uh, in, in various aspects actually things like um uh, cyber crime and uh, warning the citizen about fake news and so on and so part of it is because it's quite a large profession is to go around government and draw together the case studies uh, of the work they're doing and seeing which what innovations they're doing that are pointing us towards this future and it, it, interesting you say that because i think this is this is absolutely fundamental to the role of people working in the communication function is this notion of getting up getting out from behind your desk and going and talking to people, going and finding out what's going on. Because as the manifesto quite correctly points out, you know the future is about artificial intelligence. It's about data. Um, it's about uh, automation. It's about technology. So how are you going about or have you included uh, you know the 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 ICT areas in in the year of marketing given that the platforms upon which much of the marketing technology runs will be held and owned and operated by the chief information officers who run these particular um, platforms yeah really good question I mean first of all uh, as you say um, the ability of a marketer to get up and speak to people, um, I agree, is one of their prime, uh, one of the, one of the, frankly, one of their prime strengths. And I'm never happier if I'm running a marketing department and see the fact that nobody's around. I hope they're not having a, a, a nice holiday. What I hope is what, what they're doing is um, they're, they're in the mud of the marketplace. They're talking to customers. They're talking to colleagues. But you're right on the digital side. Um, there is a danger. I don't know if you're experiencing in your, in, your, um, uh, in your neck of the woods, actually, where digital transformation is... Uh, it's just potentially operating in a slight silo um, from uh, from marketing itself. And I uh, certainly, um, I'm very keen where I sit in the Department for International Trade to say, first and foremost, let's collectively focus on the customer, the citizen. In our case, let's say, let's call it exporting. Uh, we're trying to get small businesses around the UK to start their exporting journey. The, you know, the, the solutions we have, as well as the insight and the campaigns, is actually bringing them onto platforms where actually they can self-serve, they, they, um, uh, they can understand their own challenges, they can receive information, they can actually apply for export opportunities. And that requires a, um, a really um, integrated digital and human effort. Because also one of the channel options is for them simply to speak to one of our, um, our regional experts. So you know, 
take it from the, uh, the you know the potential small business person who would let's say like to export to um, Australia, for instance. They've got a number of channel options, and you know we in marketing don't own all those channel options, but in effectively we inverted commas want to own the whole customer experience. That's what we should be collectively owning, and so um, you know. The conversations we have, and I'm about to go and have one uh, later this afternoon, is with our digital colleagues say, let's put our heads together um, and let's not talk about your role and my role. Let's talk about how do we give um, a potential exporter the first-class support and experience which involves data, information and data uh, uh, to give them, to actually enable them to grow their own business. And of course, let's make it easier for ourselves in government because if they do come onto our sites, let's learn about their habits, let's learn about their behaviors, and let's therefore serve them up content, which is the right content at the right time, which ideally will cut down my marketing budgets and improve the customer experience in the same way. And I'm trying to get this idea in um, amongst colleagues that this idea called a marketing budget, I've got my budget, I've won my budget, I will now spend it, is, is the wrong way around. Mm. It's actually how much do we need to invest uh, in this whole program, which involves a number of key disciplines in order to give, uh, in order to achieve our objective. And in the UK, on the exporting side, it's to raise our, uh, our exporting for the presence from 30, I think 30 to 35% is our objective to get Britain exporting. That's the challenge. And whenever I talk to colleagues, wherever they're from, let's start with the challenge we all face. So Conrad, just how are those conversations going? They, 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 as I say, I think that they're going pretty well. I mean, um, you, you clearly have got to lean in and be generous and, 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 and lead the charge. But w- when I speak to um, digital colleagues and so on uh, about, um, about how can we improve customer service, they and raise it at that level, they're, they're delighted. They're thinking that same thing themselves. They, 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 they don't necessarily see the marketers come you know, um, all the time. And I'm saying that we need to be co-located, co-located. We need to have joint insight teams. We need to have triangular relationships with digital um, marketing and operations to ensure that we're totally focused on delivering an optimum experience. And from that, you get some really cool innovations. So I'm not going to, I'll just give you a couple, I want to put a couple of examples. We're using, um, uh, yeah, obviously, voice technology, really important, Alexa growing massively. Um, but yeah, our, our, our public health people are, uh, 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 people are using um, Alexa f- to help um, breastfeeding mothers because it's a really hands-free way of giving them oh, advice yeah. uh, as, as they're in action. Um, you know, we're, we've got a podcast here going on at the moment, and we know that actually long engaged content is a really good, you know, people will listen to this. And so we kicked off our exporting uh, podcast where um, an individual exporter will, will spend half an hour talking, uh, being interviewed about their own export journey. That, that's fantastic deep engagement, which actually has received a huge amount of downloads uh, for potential small businesses because people are prepared to use these channels and learn in, uh, in a different way. So in that area, that's absolutely where when we, when we share examples like that, that's where the digital, the operations and the marketing people really get excited by working together. Mm. It's very exciting and it's very smart. I, I think the way that you've articulated, I can now see the light and I can see that uh, it, it it will be a success because I think the other thing that um, the government communication service does well is that it sticks with things. It doesn't get mm. knocked off course and it actually goes about, it evaluates, it continues. And as you say, it, it may not, it, 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 the year of marketing or the word marketing may not survive, but this notion of collaboration and cooperation and putting the citizen or indeed um, the customer. I'm intrigued by you using the word the customer because, again, we see parts of that happening here in this part of the world, but you use the words interchangeably. Do you think that that, again, is going to grate with some of the more traditional elements of the British public sector? Oh, you got me on that one. Um, yes, I guess um, you know, citizen is, is the correct term because I, I suppose one could imply that a customer is in some way paying. Um, but I would say that actually um, you could point out to any public servant and saying that actually the millennial generation, totally digital, cute, operating digitally, highly demanding, um, and actually wanting, wanting services, etc., online, at their own time, one-to-one personalization. That is a kind of fact. And what you can do is you can 
bring that in to the public service and say, look, we're all, you know, we're all working with citizens, but this is, this is the demands that are being made on us now. And if we're not able to respond and deliver services in a way that our audiences, or I call them customers mistakenly, but actually want it, nowadays they will go elsewhere uh, in, in some terms. You know, they don't necessarily, government doesn't necessarily have a monopoly on everything, and either they will go elsewhere or they will actually do things Worse, like not bother to fill in their tax or uh, elements like that. So one absolutely needs to stay current and, and you know, use the channels that uh, our audiences are using to deliver the right service to them. So um, I guess my argument there is actually the world is moving very, very fast and um, government can't uh, sit in, in the sense, uh, sit in the past. We've actually got to be very, very um, mindful of the societal changes, the um, the trends in society that actually make uh, the demands on government uh, you know, really quite profound in terms of the service uh, delivery we have to offer them. I think the the most revealing part of this podcast, in in many ways, Conrad, is that like my good self, you know, you're the wrong side of fifty, but you sound more enthusiastic than at, at probably any time of your career about you know these wonderful opportunities driven by technologies to be able to solve some of you know the community's most wicked problems yeah I, absolutely i mean um we know that actually uh, technology offers solutions as well as offering problems in its own right um it's a good time of, i'm very lucky i i've worked for 20 years in the private sector and i've never felt happier actually be able to sleep more soundly at night knowing that actually um, in the public sector you're trying to make a difference and I think that's what keeps my passion high and I hope that I infect every colleague or government communicator I work with to remind them how privileged we all are working on issues that really matter to people and that's frankly what keeps me going our past 50 David and I suspect you too. Indeed well you've inspired me today as you did last week with that wonderful story about the great campaign and again ladies and gentlemen if you haven't listened to that jump back make sure you don't miss it because it is a cracking episode it really is a wonderful story and again to hear the story today of the future and of the focus and of the way that the UK's government communication service is taking on the challenge of what's next um, it's what we all have to do and there's you know but to go about it in this you know carefully well thought through well articulated um, uh, thoughtful manner is again quite typical of the government communication service and I think the world looks to you for uh, leadership in this space, uh, uh, Conrad, and you've done it again. So congratulations Go to on. you, um, to Alex and the rest of the team. Uh, it's, it's great stuff. And I think we'll all be watching uh, very closely um, with your experience to understand just exactly how, how can these relationships be matured? How can these conversations take place? How can we grow that c capability in the public service around the world to be much better and take advantage of the great gift of technology or the, the elements of the great gift of technology, which in order us uh, enable us to have uh, that wonderful uh, impact? So, Conrad, thank you so much for coming back once again. Great pleasure. Thank you very much, David. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A wonderful conversation again with Conrad Bird. And look, if you didn't get the opportunity to listen to the podcast from two weeks ago where we spoke about the great campaign, make sure you go back and have a listen to that because it's a, a wonderful insight into a very clever campaign that has had enormous impact in the UK and a joined up effort from the whole of the UK government to really help to have dramatic impact. So that's a great podcast. But I'm sure you'll agree that this discussion about marketing has been very valuable. It's one that needs to be had. And it doesn't surprise me, and I'm sure it doesn't surprise you, that this leadership in the government communication space continues from our good friends at the government communication service. And this notion of, as Conrad said, getting out from behind the desk and going and talking to people. You know, if you listen to the podcast regularly, that it's something that I'm talking about all the time because it is so important to go out 
and to join up the capabilities that we need uh, to bring together in order for us to have that impact that we're looking for in our work. So great insight there from from uh, from Conrad Bird and just a, a, a wonderful professional and a great leader in our field. So I hope you enjoyed, as I very much enjoyed the conversation this week. But for the moment, thanks very much for joining us this week, but I'll be back at the same time in two weeks. But for now, it's bye for now. You've been listening to the GovComs podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest episodes.